Well, Dr. Natalie Cabral, thank you so much for being with us on QED with Dr. B today. I'm very pleased to be here. Thank you for inviting me. When we talk about the search for extraterrestrial life, what exactly are we talking about? For example, we often hear, you know, the idea of some humanoid creature with two arms and two legs. When we're looking for life though, what are we actually looking for? That's a great question because although we are looking for life in the universe, we don't have a consensus on the definition of life on Earth. So how do we search for something that we don't really know what it is about, right? So the life we know is what you just mentioned, and it's complex life. It's life that has gone through 4 billion years of evolution. But life on Earth was not always this way. In fact, for 80% of the history of Earth, life was very simple. It was unicellular. It took almost 4 billion years to get to complex creatures. And, and so then you see a diversity of life that interacts with this environment. And the way life looks like, in fact, is a response to the environment. So the key here is coevolution of life and environment. We look this way because we live on this planet. Aliens are going to look a different way because they are interacting with a different environment. But I would say that it is very likely that 90% of alien life is microscopic, just like life here on Earth. You look at extreme environments here on Earth, such as the altitude remote lakes in the Andes. How does your understanding of environments in which organisms can live here on Earth inform us about the search for life outside of Earth? Our planet is a natural lab. For me, in the Andes, I go there because the environment as a whole is very similar to what Mars was 3.5 billion years ago. It has a thin atmosphere, very high UV, very dry, very little water, uh, desiccated, etc. So what I want to understand when I go there is first, is life possible there? And if it is there, where it is, how does it look like? And what do I need to detect and identify it? Take us to the next step with Mars Perseverance, the rover that's roaming around the planet. What exactly is it looking for? And when you see that, how will you differentiate if that's life or not? I always joke that the only way we could tell for sure that there is life on Mars if we had a rabbit jumping in front of the rover. <laughs> uh, this is not going to happen. So Perseverance is a biosignature detection mission, which means that it's looking for the signature of life on, on Mars. And how it does that? Well, it does that because we have all of this knowledge accumulated from the Mars Exploration Rover mission and Curiosity mission who learned about the environment of Mars a long time ago. There again, co-evolution of life and environment. We go to those terrestrial analogs, we learn what kind of life is there, and then we learn about the chemical, the morphological and other uh, signature, potential signatures for life. So we're going to look for that. We are going to look for the potential interaction between life and its environment on Mars. And this interaction can have been recorded in uh, the rocks, if you prefer, either as chemicals, molecules, or it can be morphology, like the build-up, the structure that life builds. At this point in time, there is no definite biosignature. There is no definite thing that can tell you this is life. However, having said that, when you have that mounting evidence, then you go there and you grab that evidence. The stuff we are made of is very common in the universe. And because of the discovery of exoplanet, we realize that worlds like the Earth, they are fairly common. So there is obviously potential for many, many different types of life. We are really beginners as a civilization. We are a teenage civilization, and that shows on the way we're treating our planet. We have to go through 
this experimental phase, you know, teenagers have enough brain to get themselves in trouble. And uh, this is where we are right now. But I would say that I think we are not doing too bad. But imagine a alien civilization that's only a few hundred years ahead of us. Who knows what they can do? Say a thousand years or even a million years, right? And then you can think that they have a much better understanding of the physics of the universe, of how it works. And it may be that they are going to present themselves in ways that we have no clue about.